Let us pray. Dear Lord, there are green lights and there are red lights and then there are yellow lights that cause us to slow down, that ask for a little bit of caution. Our service is made up of many elements and we come to this space where you call us to pause, to slow down, to hear, to receive witness, to open up our hearts once more and our ears and our minds. Pour into us in this moment, Lord. Continue to be faithful to us in this moment, Lord. May your word be profound in our lives. Hear the message in spite of the messenger. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like to use for a sermonic theme today, God meant it for good. God meant it for good. Eleven years ago, Mary Kay gave birth to fraternal twins. Their names were Cecilia and Eleanor. Her and Jason already had two kids, but now they instantly had four. The twins were born polar opposites, but connected still at the hip. In their church was a member who knitted and crochet, and so this member knitted both the girls, Cecilia and Eleanor, their very own blankets. They were similar in style, but different in color. They both had their very own security blanket to cover them and to carry them on the beginning of their life, their journey. On long family road trips, the twins would grab their blankets. As time progressed, Cecilia shedded her blanket. She outgrew it. She no longer needed it. But the opposite happened with Eleanor. Eleanor kept getting closer and closer to her blanket. She was not letting go. The parents could observe this and tried different strategies to create distance between her and the blanket. Their attempts failed. Eleanor clung even harder to her blanket. And so with another year and another year around the sun, the baby blanket became tattered with holes in it. They finally even sent it out to be fixed because it was clear that Eleanor was going to take a few more trips around the moon with this blanket. This is where we enter the biblical text this morning, wedded between passion and palms. Jesus has gotten arrested. Those who love him and have journeyed with him in some capacity are holding, very much like Eleanor, onto Jesus, clinging. He had shared with him just before his arrest that they were going to feel like the world was falling apart. And even with the news, Peter leaned in and clung harder to Jesus. I don't know what these other Niagara's going to do, but Jesus, I got you. All along Jesus' ministry, he had been trying to warn them. And all along his ministry, they were not trying to hear it. They leaned in closer, clinging to Jesus. No, you can, you, you, you can keep that bad news. We're not hearing it. Maybe deep down the arrival of the Messiah had meant a different outcome. Parade, not palms. Passion, not pain. Prophecy, not policing. Nope, we didn't travel this long with you and witness signs and miracles for the story to end like this. I watched the Oscars this year and so I've always learned of a few movies I might want to see um, that I have not seen. So I took a few notes here and there of a couple of movies. Poor Things wasn't one of them, but my friend suggested I watch it, and it was free on my streaming services. So I did, or I attempted. I'm a Methodist through and through, believe it or not. And so if I start something, I like to follow it, finish it out to the end. But you all, five minutes into watching the movie The Poor Things, I was disturbed. Ten minutes in, I was texting my friend. I wanted to finish it, I wanted to be true and stick the movie out, but 40 minutes in I had to confess it was gonna be a wrap for me. Whatever made it Oscar worthy went over my head. From the beginning, this movie didn't connect with me. And then one of my friends explained this was for the generation that watched Frankenstein, the generation before me. Sometimes when we watch a movie, it's good all the way up into the end. Sometimes we watch a movie and we say, that was a movie, that was one for the books. But sometimes we get upset because we don't like the way 
the movie ended. The movie throws us for a loop. I imagine that's some of what the disciples felt. Wait, wait, wait a minute. This is, this is not going the way we want. I imagine if they had been more articulate, living in a different time period, they might have uttered, we don't like this ending, Jesus. I remember this season in daycare when I would go to pick up my son. He was not ready to go. The time with his friends was so good. The fun of creative play was effective. There were so many places in the room to explore oneself in play. I would watch other parents come in and their kids gladly run to them, their precious bundles of joy. But I would get there to pick up my son. He would look up and then he would return to play. I thought it odd. I didn't want my feelings to be hurt, that he wasn't ready to go, that at the sight of me, he wasn't eager to leave whatever he was doing in that moment. Sometimes we want the good times to keep rolling, amen. We want the party to continue. We want our time with each other to never end. We want this feeling of t- connection to stay. The disciples were a close circle of devotees that have traveled with Jesus and developed close ties. They had witnessed the miracles and signs close up. They had seen Jesus tackle the Pharisees close up. They had seen Lazarus rise close up. They had seen 5,000 get fed close up. They had seen Jesus not only speak to the waves, but walk on water close up. They were there for it all. And I can imagine they didn't want this party this good time to end. Often endings have a bit of sadness to them. It requires something of us that we're not readily available to give. Beginnings, that's one thing. Starting something, that's one thing. But Jesus trying to leave us, no. One of the things my son learned, and I hope we're all learning, is you don't get to stay forever. Jesus had a very specific time period. He was sent here to earth. He was sent here to do a very specific mission that no one else could do. And when that time was up, it was up. Jesus was sent to deposit hope into our world. Jesus was sent to give us a path forward. Jesus was sent to help the despondent faith community find its way. Jesus was sent to help move us forward. But he was sent to be here for a specific side, not to stay forever on this side. A couple have a wrong line at partnership together. The husband dies. Three months later, it's the wife's birthday. It comes and she gets a dozen of red roses. The backdrop to this story is every year her husband would give her roses. She thinks to herself, he was so thoughtful that months before he died, He put this order in of roses. She sets the roses in a nice vase and she looks at them. Another year rolls by and she gets a dozen of roses. While she thinks he paid it forward a whole, a whole, a whole year. The flowers remind her of the most awesome love that she had. They bring a smile to her face as she reads the message from her husband. Another year passes, and guess what? Now she's curious, and she goes down to the floral shop to investigate things. What's really going on here? Her husband had set up for 20 years for her to get flowers on her birthday every year. Every year, she gets a reminder A colleague of mine got the job of a lifetime, and it was a big title, big responsibility, big pay. A year later, she got fired. I tried to do the friends and express sadness, and she looked at me and laughed. Girl, she said, that was the best thing that job could have done for me. She said, I was way in over my head. She said, they freed me. She said, I'm happier. She said, I've changed careers. Sometimes united behind bad news is the sun waiting to come out. Sometimes behind bad news is an opportunity for us to show up differently in the world. Sometimes behind what feels like bad news is a door open beckoning us forward. 
Have you ever heard the story of KFC? Why did Colonel Harlan Sanders wait to be a senior to start frying chicken? Well, did you know he had a gas station in Corbin, Kentucky? And he would see travelers all the time coming through to get gas at his gas station. And so Harlan began to fix meals for them. And he was good at frying chicken. And so he decided to perfect his frying chicken recipe, which contains a secret blend of 11 herbs and spices. His chicken became so popular that in 1936, he opened a restaurant. But guess what happened in Kentucky? Kentucky decided to build an interstate right where his restaurant was. That could have been the end of that story, but he grabbed hold to another idea. He franchised his restaurant out. The first franchise restaurant was open in Salt Lake City, and the rest was history, 62 years old. Sometimes the story that feels like the end is just an entrance to more, even in all of its sadness and obstacles. A little girl got pearls when she was young. She loved her pearl necklace. She took care of it. She wore it to special events. And over the years, it got worn and torn. But it was still functional, and it was special to her. And one day, her dad asked her for them. She's like, I don't think so. These are my pearls. He asked for them again and again. He asked for her, daughter, trust me. She wasn't liking the ask or how this conversation was going because sometimes we don't like how the story sounds. We don't like how we think the story's going to end. Finally, she released the pearls to her dad and in return, her dad gave her a new set of pearls for an older, mature person that she had become. And these pearls were even more beautiful. She leaped up to give her dad a big hug around the neck. Jesus had been telling the disciples this story almost from day one. And for one reason or another, his community didn't want to hear it all. But he kept telling them anyway, I go to prepare a place for you. Look, I'm getting up out of here. Look, my days are short. Look, they're coming for me. Maybe it doesn't sound like the story they wanted to hear. But if all we see is death, we miss so much more this week of Holy Week. Jesus wanted to give us real tangible hope, something to hold on. I have come that you might have life, says John, and have that more abundantly. But I'm not staying. Because if I do, you'll never develop wings. If I never leave, you'll never know the power of your own strength. If I don't go back to be with my God, you'll continue to lean. If I don't get out of here, you'll never leave home and share the message with others. I only came from heaven to earth to help you go further. So don't miss the forest for the trees. Don't miss the beauty for the ashes. Don't miss the gain for the pain. Don't miss the love for the lost. Don't miss the journey for the jungle. Don't miss the mission for the mess. Don't miss the message for the messenger. Don't miss the stamina for the struggle. God meant it. God meant it all for good. And you, you united, are worth so much more. Amen. <laughs>